acronym for digitally digital digitally um, distributed uh, virtual chaos, and this is what it is. And I have here with me Amy Spark from Argentina. Um, they've been here before, uh, I think on the first day on the ICC profiles. This time Amy's going to tell us um, the curse of slide making. Now, haven't we all been there? Hang on a minute, I have to say something. Forgot something. Dieser Talk wird auf Englisch gehalten, wie euch schon aufgefallen sein dürfte, wenn ihr die Übersetzung wollt. Unten rechts bei euch ähm, ist äh, auf, dem, auf dem Rand des, äh, des Bildes, das ihr seht, da bleibt ein bisschen oben drüber und dann kommt eine, ihr seht ihr den Lautregler und da tut ihr auf Native und dann könnt ihr Übersetzung klicken und dann kommt das Ganze in Deutsch. And we go on in English, excuse me for that, but um, we had to announce the translation. Now haven't we all been there and uh, slide making is uh, and, and, and most of it is hated and Amy's gonna <laughs> you're grin, you know. <laughs> so um you know, people haven't come to listen to me to talk, they're listening to you. So Amy, go ahead, your stage. That I run into sadly at work that I uh, try to call the course of a slide making. For a bit of context, I said it in my previous talk, I'm a full-time contract dev for KDE Scrita. I specialize in lots of things that are mostly course. You will find my post on a lot of free open source projects over there. You, and if you want to check me out, you can visit my website, which is amyspart.me. So let's go quick. Uh, the stack is divided into three sections. First, we'll see why I submitted this talk to Debug. Then we will see some requirements as regards slide making. And finally, some tools about making sites. So for the motivation, this stems from a, a talk that I had with a friend right when I submitted my proposal for the first Debug talk about ACC profiles. This Proposal I submitted it right after I was rejected for the 12th time for a university teaching post. So you can guess how I felt about the whole thing. And I asked myself if I, I could, well, actually give a talk correctly. Strictly speaking about slide decks, they are a key tool in a, in a lot of jobs out there. For instance, make a business, a business proposal, a, accountancy, administration, so on. They are mostly oriented uh, around a very specific topic. Sometimes, as in my case for university teaching posts, there uh, is a very tight deadline under which you have to submit them. For instance, in my case, three working days. And finally, they are usually uh, intended to be used for a reasonably long speaking time, for instance, uh, like my previous talk, uh, almost 30 minutes. And in the case of university, teaching post almost an hour of class. So you will be asking if it is possible to fulfill all these requirements with a slide deck. The answer is you will end up feeling like the witch pepper in this comic of David Raboy. She wanted to write a, a list of all the things that she needed to do for a start of a new year. She was intending to do all this in a week and well, things didn't go as planned. In my case, this is because the technical know-how about the topic you are going to cover in a slide is important. But how you are going to implement those, that slide deck with the tool you choose is actually what makes it essential. Because the effort you put there and how you use the tool can actually make a difference for better, or as in my case, for the worse, in your presentation. So the purpose of this talk is to let you know all the pitfalls on the different tools that I surveyed in order that you don't get them to suffer when you, have, when you are in a hurry and have to make slides. Requirements. Well, it goes without saying that requirements depend on a lot of things that are oriented, for, for example, to your, to your job or your, or your place of study. First, you need to consider the organizational environment, be it an university, be it your workplace, be it a, a hacker work, a work group, a workshop, or whatever. Secondly, you need to consider the actual group's requirements, but are perhaps specified in, in writing or formally. 
Then you need to consider the purpose of the talk, what you are going to transmit. Fourthly, the available time, because it's not the same when you have time to cover in depth each topic, when you have to just uh, make a, a quick overlook. And finally, the, the intended and also the possible audience, because sometimes if the talk is recorded, you not, do not only need to consider the people who will actually be attending, but also who may run into your talk in the future and perhaps just doesn't have all the necessary knowledge to uh, get, get all the whatever you are saying from scratch. So, for instance, when I had was uh, applying for the university post, these were the requirements that they, my university uh, laid out. The first one is templating, layout, and, and styling done almost automatically. This is mostly because each place uh, or each, uh, each commission or each uh, conference can set so, its own guidelines. And as much thing as you can automate, it can also save you energy in the long run. Secondly, the bibliography. This is because everyone will want references. And for instance, I like putting this on a slide because other people uh, actually uh, put them in a separate document. Thirdly, mathematical tools, because I come from a computer science academia and we use this a lot. I discover, for instance, equations, tables, a graph, a graph making, plotting, and so on. And fourthly, graphic making. By this, I mean, for instance, a rendering an SPG document inside the, inside the uh, for instance, this PDF, but, oh, sorry. What they actually mean is not only that everyone wants a lista figure, but perhaps you want them to uh, be styled automatically depending on the style of each of the plates of conference that you are covering. So for the tools, I will be covering the pros, the cons, and how they match or probably not the requirements. First of all, everyone knows them, everyone has used them at least once. These are presentation programs, for instance, PowerPoint, LibreOffice in Place, uh, LibreOffice Press, or Apple Keynote. They are all very well known and possibly the also the most hand because they come pre-installed with every computer. They all have lots of options to make graphics, but they are, as they are well, uh, uh, business tools that are all oriented to businesses. They're all portable because they only depend on the, on the version of the program. And as for the cons, first of all, there is no cross program with no compatibility. There is a lot of effort, for instance, on the, on the part of LibreOffice, but it's, it's not enough. The budget is also important because, for instance, to access Apple Keynote, you need to share like, what, 2,000, 3,000 US dollars for a Mac. And a PowerPoint, uh, well, nowadays they have a, a monthly uh, licensing because, uh, but when I was uh, well, a bit younger, the only option was a perpetual license, which cost a, fair, a very fair bit of money in Argentina. Secondly, none of these tools have functionality for academic environments. So forget about biography. For better about references and equations, it's very brittle to make them uh, lay out correctly. And for graphic making is available to only what to what each of these programs provide you. And finally, have you ever tried styling a template in each of these tools? It's, it's kind of a nightmare. Second tool, these are all online presentation tools, for instance, Google Slides. Prezi that is used a lot in education, Critpad, and also a web framework presentation tool that is called reveal.js. These are all very ultra portable because they run in any reasonable up-to-date up browser. Most, if not all of them, have collaborative editing in the, in the case of reveal.js, for instance, through a source version control system. And embedding online, runs, uh, online resources is is directly a no-brainer because they are all online, so they can just put it into an iframe. Cons, again, they all lack tools for academia, same bibliography, references, also equations. Graphic making for 
because of, of obvious, re obvious reasons, is much more limited than what you would get, in, for instance, in PowerPoint. Styling choice are also much more constrained because they depend on the minimal set of fonts that each program provides. And extensibility is very limited or not none at all because most of these tools are all closed source or they are already pre-compiled when you get them to access from the browser. And finally, uh, if you are using Google Slides of Prezi and you are in Europe, you will have perhaps some GDPR concerns as regards the information of whoever your audience or your own information. Tool number three, Pandoc, which is called also the Swiss Army knife of, uh, for format transformation. The big pro is that you can write markdown and you can render in just about any format you can imagine. Thankfully, these tools includes include support for bibliography as well as equations, depending on the output format. Of, of course, the layout will be much easier and more limited. A well-made template actually removes you from all the styling equation. I learned about this when I was submitting my first article, my first scholarly article. But the con is to act that actually setting that, that template up is really, really hard because it often replicates whatever weirdness or quirks the output format has. If you are end up targeting LaTeX, because you, have, you want to use some package or your template and it's uh, some customization that only LaTeX provides, you end up actually duplicating effort because you use Pandoc to write LaTeX and then you need the LaTeX tool chain to use, uh, well, uh, different LaTeX engines. And of course, you have little control of uh, bibliography formatting and the splitting. This means that when you have lots of references, Pandoc doesn't provide you with a way to separate them into different slides. It will just throw them into a single slide and what, what, whatever it comes, it comes. Uh, I mentioned here latest plus CSL because in, in humanistics, we, they use a specific format that is called citation style language and latest is just doesn't support it. Pandoc itself does, but not the, uh, the possible output format. And of course, graphics are just impossible because uh, Pandoc does, is not intended to manage graphics. The last one, Beamer, is a package that is uh, part of the latex type setting system. This will be probably a tool of choice if you have already been exposed. For instance, in academia, we use it a, a very lot. It's what I'm using uh, you, uh, to show you these slides. It has, for obvious reasons, native bibliography handling. It's super, super extensible, whether via hooks or via different packages or packages that are intended to override Beamer. And of course, the uh, output is fixed to PDF, but you can uh, output different materials, for instance, course notes, drafts, or slides, like the ones that I'm showing you now. The cons. Making graphics with Beamer under LaTeX is not bad. It's really, really, really bad. This is probably the weakest point of the whole ecosystem. And in my case, just the time needed to make a good graph cost me many university post applications. As with anything that has LaTeX in it, it has a very steep learning curve. But on its defense, once you have learned LaTeX, you can really amortize the, uh, all the time that you have spent it because setting a new, a new template up is just a couple of lines if the, the original already works. And you're also kind of limited to the hooks that officially Beamer or the template that you are using provide. But the good, the good benefit that is that LaTeX tool chains are mostly free and open source. They are all installed, it's all in, in your system. So you can just have a look at the file, check how things are done and just change it on the fly. Conclusions. We covered why I wanted to talk about all this course that the slide making is, the requirement for a potentially good uh, slide deck and four different tools that I run uh, across over time. The weakest point of all the tools that we have seen is 
bibliography and graphic making. My conclusion would be do not reinvent the wheel, do not spend look, uh, looking for, time for looking for another tool. If you have one, try extending it as much as possible. But I still really wish for graphic making to be easier and to be integrated in each of these tools. So thank you for watching and I'm open to any questions. Um, hi, that is absolutely correct. Everything, what you're saying, I've been there. I share my emotions with you. Um, as a question, uh, as a first question out of my own experience, mm -hmm. um, what stops me from doing my type thing in whatever I'm using and doing graphics externally in a, in a dedicated graphics program? In my own experience, the problem stems, for instance, when you have to uh, take control of the styling of the graphic, for instance. Uh, I saw a couple of talks about uh, what was, uh, I think it was networking in a, in a, in a conference. And it, it is painfully obvious when the uh, graphic with SVG is embedded, is designed for instance, for instance a color over white and the actual slides are made in white over black. There is a very strong uh, contrast between the, for instance, the borders and the, the actual slides. It's a problem, it's mainly a problem of automating the, the, con the contrast and the color handling. Um, I have to log in somewhere to get my um, questions from the board. I'm awfully sorry. Will you excuse me for a second? Um, be right with you in a second. If it's okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I found. I have to log in, Lobby. It doesn't let me in. That's the problem. I can't read it. Sorry. But, um... Oh, there you are. Um, oh, there. <laughs> It's, that's not a question, is it? That's a statement. All programs are flawed. <laughs> <laughs> so what? <laughs> so what do we do? Um, uh, the best I could recommend is use whatever tools you know, especially if you can use a browser presentation tool, for example, is, uh, for example Google Slides. That's the best. But I, I would like for uh, developers out there to start considering graphic making as a as a primary purpose of the tool and just not something that they stuck embedded as a plugin. For instance, in case, the case of Beaver, uh, graphic making, uh, uh, another package that is included is called pgf ticks and that's right, a uh, right mess. What would stop you from combining programs like LaTeX and something else for the graphic part? Would that be helpful? Uh, I used to do, do so, for instance, for my BSc thesis. And it kind of depends, for instance, because my supervisor couldn't build up the graphics, I, but I could. And uh, when I had to share actually, uh, my, the code of my, of my thesis, for instance, in the computers of the, uh, the, uh, the university library, the tool that, that I used that was called Asymptote just crashed. So it's always a game of portability versus just using the whatever tools are available. And the uh, next question is, where can I find your Beamer templates? I will be uploading them after the after this debug. They are, they are all private because it, it stems from my BSc and my master's thesis, uh, thesis, and I never actually shared them online. Mm, thank you. That's nice. Um, 
would 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 it be helpful if I stayed in a suite where at least where I can share all my ICC and color profiles and 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 templates? Or is that not possible because of interoperability is not as we wanted it to be? Sorry? Can I share templates between different programs? And uh, style sheets? And uh, it depends. For instance, um, in the case of uh, programs like uh, PowerPoint, uh, etc., one, uh, Keynote, and LibreOffice, Technically, yes, but it depends on the great degree of compatibility that, that each tool has. It's the same for Pandoc, because Pandoc actually takes these templates and renders them into the output format. But for instance, in the case of LaTeX, no, that, that's, that's uh, just not, not, not possible. OK, because we're the next program point will be in five minutes. So in, uh, we have one more question. Um, Sure. If I was to start all out new, what would you recommend as a program? PowerPoint. I know that's unfair, but yeah, it's unfair. But PowerPoint. Okay. Just... Uh, good answer. And if you're an Apple person, you use um, the 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 equivalent Apple program. No, actually no, <laughs> because actually, uh, no? Keynote. Yeah, I am actually a Mac OS user, and actually Keynote has given me a very extensive set of brain aches. So I would just go for PowerPoint in Windows, in Linux, perhaps PowerPoint via Quine, and in Mac OS, I would just suggest go to Google Slides. So you're sorry about that. Well, you can work in with PowerPoint. I think PowerPoint for Mac exists. You just have to rent it or buy it. Uh, I used to run Word. I used to run Word on my Mac, so that if you have Word, you have PowerPoint. Yeah, that, that, that's 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 also possible nowadays. Okay, um, I don't think we have any more questions. Um, shall we transfer to the breakout room and see what happens sure. if you get any more? Um, okay, um, thank you very much for people on the stream.